see our universe has got stars, planets, galaxies and many exotic objects. It could be limitless, infinite. But as per Bible, it was born suddenly out of nothingness some 6,000 years ago. And the modern science of the entire universe is called cosmology. There the most popular model is called Big Bang model. And as per it, again universe was born suddenly out of nothingness, out of a massive explosion of a single point. So before that, they say there is no space, no time, not even that point. But unlike the biblical case, there are many cogent reasons why most of the physicists today believe in the Big Bang model. First of all, there are very good indirect evidences our universe is expanding. If it is expanding, if you interpolate back, it started from a point, some 13.8 billion years ago. Nonetheless, there are many problems, theoretical and observational challenges which are piled up for the Big Bang model. And today I am going to highlight one of such things. So as per Big Bang model, universe, whatever you see, galaxies, stars, whatever matter, that constitute only 15% of the available matter. And rest 85% we cannot see. It is called dark matter and it is very exotic. So this is I am going to highlight today. So what happens is that what is dark matter? Suppose a room is there, it is dark except for a candle lit is there. So we can see the candle, it is a luminous matter, light is coming. But if the candle will extinguish, again we cannot see anything, it's again all dark matter. Not exactly, these days there are night vision devices are there. So night vision devices actually we can see the body by its heat emitted. And in battlefield, this is used to track the enemy. There is a technical name for this heat. It is called infrared radiation. Both this visible light and infrared, they are part of a broad thing called electromagnetic spectrum, out of which we get a radio transmission also. Radio, optical, then X-rays, X-rays used for medical sciences, and gamma rays, which are much more powerful X-rays. And astronomers have telescopes for all such bands. So dark matter is one which cannot be seen by any of these bands. So nothing comes out. And how do we get light? So we have read in school also that inside atom there is a nucleus comprising protons and neutrons. And outside it, electrons are orbiting it. Something like planets are orbiting the sun. But these electron orbits can jump from one orbit to another and then they emit light. So this is the main source of the light. But even if there is no light, in principle, we may feel dark matter. Why? Suppose in the dark room also, in principle, we can weigh the candle if we have a spring balance. So what comes is the weight that is gravity interaction with the Earth's gravity. So in this universe, all the bodies are trying to attract others. This is known as universal property of gravity. And that is the reason apple falls towards the earth rather than flies away towards the sky. And by using this property of gravity, actually dark matter was inferred more than 60 years ago. Suppose the blue patch disk you are seeing, our visible galaxy, all the stars are there. And now imagine some arbitrary, some particle or some cloud is moving outside the galaxy. If there be no matter beyond this blue disk, then effect of gravity as you go away would decrease then the speed of rotation would also fall off the way that it is shown in the red light. Because as you go further away, gravity is weaker if there is no matter. But what astronomers find, the most of the galaxies called spiral galaxies, the rate remains clouds are moving at the same speed almost. That means there is the effect of gravity, unseen masses there. And that is called evidence for very good evidence for dark matter. And it came from some radio line, 21 centimeter line. We know in the transistor there are various marks are there. And this 21 centimeter these days is used by ham radio operators, the amateur radio operators. How does it appear? Consider the simplest atom, hydrogen atom. Just one proton and one neutron. Actually both the protons and neutrons behave like small tops. Small tops, they are actually spinning. But what happens sometimes the electron flips its spin. And that time this 21 centimeter line is emitted. 
And this happens in very cold clouds, interstellar cloud, interstellar space. It could be extremely cold. It could be minus 200 degrees Celsius, which we cannot imagine. And, but this flipping takes very rarely. Once in 10 million years, and these lines are extremely weak. So even if such a matter is there, very difficult to detect. So this is a very good example of dark matter. But there could be even better example. There could be some spaces even cooler. We cannot imagine minus, two, minus 250 degree even Celsius. So how cool many of us are not from science. So I can tell you it is much, much cooler than your Mentos. We can just imagine minus 250. And now what happens, two atoms are joined together to form hydrogen molecule. And then spin flip also does not take place. So no emission, this is perfect dark matter, no light, nothing emitted. But it might be detected fortuitously if some carbon monoxide or some other gas is there from their emissions. So although this is perfect dark matter, this is not the dark matter which Big Bang model requires. Why? Because we know we get various elements, so carbon, silicon, we extract from mine, but they are not produced in mine. They are produced in the cores of the stars, which are extremely hot. And these are like nuclear furnaces. So we have various elements up to iron produced there. This theory was known for a long time, but it came to a form, around final form, in, uh, by this paper. Barbage, Barbage, and then Fowler and Hoyle. Fowler got Nobel Prize, and Hoyle was a better physicist, he was denied. Presumably because he would criticize many of the mainstream things like I do. And they confound that in this case that maybe this, uh, but light elements like heavy hydrogen, something called helium, they are not produ produced adequately by this thing. So then they are not produced. So then came the idea of the Big Bang nucleus synthesis. So I tell you it is a huge explosion of Big Bang. And they found that in the first 3 to 20 minutes of the universe so hot, these elements can be produced. Indeed, it produced. 24% of the matter in the is helium, nicely produced without any dark matter. But then when it comes to heavy hydrogen, it failed, it was overproducing. Then they tweaked the theory. They found that only 15% protons and neutrons interacting, they can match it. So they did, so rest of the 85% must be such, they do not interact. Except for some weak interaction, which is something thousand times weaker than the whatever electric interactions. So this is the genesis of Big Bang dark matter. And its nature came to be known much later. In the 1980s, we had a new principle in physics called supersymmetry. Suppose we are standing before a mirror. We see identical image, except right looks left and left looks right. So there is an abstract mirror supersymmetry. Electron has its counterpart. Proton has its counterpart. Neutron has its counterpart. These counterpart images are, in this case, much heavier. And they have exotic properties. It was found that some combination of some exotic particles can foot the bill of Big Bang dark matter. It was called weakly interacting massive particle. It could be heavier than proton, 10 times or even 100 times heavier than proton. And then they said in the next century, we'll have very good telescopes. They will be able to detect it. Idea was that in the center of the galaxy, this wimps will concentrate. And they will interact among themselves to produce some gamma rays and neutrinos which are detectable. So from 2004, these experiments are going on. And to cut a long story short, now many claims are there. They have been found. This is from CERN, latest thing. No dark matter signal has been, no gamma ray access from dark matter has been found. And this is from Physical Review later, top physics journal. And there's a space also, there's a huge gamma ray telescope. It's the Fermi gamma ray telescope. Six year observation, they have not found any signature of any dark matter gamma rays. Now, they try to also detect indirectly. Indirectly, what they do? They try to, this WIMP is supposed to interact with liquid xenon and produce neutrons which are detectable. This is called Lux, large xenon experiment. And again, latest result is that nothing has been found. And in 2008, we produced, we made the biggest machine of human kind. It is called Large Hadronic Collider. Large Hadronic Collider is in uh, Switzerland, underground machine, 27 kilometer is just ring. And they told that once it will come, all the whims will be found, supersymmetry, everything will be determined. But the fact is that 
nothing has been found. And this is the highlight, and quite embarrassing highlight, uh, this headlight, the leading theory of dark matter running out of room to hide. And next is, so these are all product of supersymmetry, it is called SUSY. So these particles are not there because SUSY has failed. So supersymmetry fails means it is a big blow using particle physics. So particle physics has a big blow. So then they also escape root predicts other weird particles. One is axion. Those experiments have gone parallelly and no axion has been found. So there is a Carl Popper. He is a very famous science philosopher of modern times. So he says all physical theories have latent assumptions. So sometimes they match some observations, but that is not the proper verification. So they can be only refuted. If sometime they are finding, found to be contradictory, they can be only refuted. So this Big Bang dark matter has not been found. Simplification Big Bang mo model has also fallen apart. Then you can question how these light elements are produced. So these same Barbage and Hoyle revisited their old work, 40 year old work, sometime before, a few years before their death. Now they find this helium can indeed be produced in the stellar cores. And the energy released will be so much that it can explain what is called cosmic microwave background radiation, which is considered the biggest proof, a haze of microwave radiation, which is the biggest proof of Big Bang. They said that it might be explained by this thing. In addition, they found that all these lighter elements, other lighter elements like lithium and other things can be also explained if the universe is older than what Big Bang says. And if the Big Bang model has really fallen, then the universe could as well be older also. And the but biggest challenge to dark matter this became even later. It is very recent, last month's paper. Again, physical review later. 153 galaxies, the same rotation curve has been now done. 153. And the conclusion, bottom line, is that it can be explained in terms of normal matter, proton and neutron, no Big Bang exotic dark matter. And what gave it a shot? That's this observation. This is again recent result. One galaxy has been found which is full of neutral hydrogen. Now you can see the ring. Now in this ring as per Big Bang paradigm, they should wimp kind of thing. But what they have found out of the same 21 centimeter line, it is neutral hydrogen. So we are back to square one after 61. We detected dark matter from 21 centimeter line. And now again, we are finding galaxies full of hydrogen. And it is uh, uh, dark matter instead of the Big Bang dark matter. We have neutral hydrogen. Further, this month's news. One galaxy now, not galaxy, galaxy cluster. There are thousands of galaxies are being formed. And that area is full of neutral, now cold hydrogen molecule. So most likely, dark matter is not what the Big Bang tells, but it is ordinary matter. So this means that, this means the Big Bang paradigm, if, because dark matter is not there, it has fallen. And if supersymmetry has fallen, then this is a problem for particle physics. Now in particle physics, earlier we knew that electricity is a separate property, say 100 years back. Magnetism is a separate property. Then we had, there are actually two facets of the same thing called electromagnetism. So physicists have been trying to unify all interactions. Einstein started it for 80 years going on. Not only electromagnetism, I see nuclear forces there, they try to unify nuclear physics. And also the weak interaction, which gives to radioactivity. All these four forces plus gravity. And that too in a framework called quantum mechanics. What is quantum mechanics? Normal rules are by Newtonian thing, but at the atomic level, something works called quantum mechanics. So using incorporating, they incorporated and the biggest program for the last 40 years is called super strength theory. So 10,000 physicists at least have worked, many brilliant minds, even now thousands are working, they are most powerful people. They get win almost all the awards, most powerful cult in the science. Actually, it is the high priest of Big Bang physics and many novel reads are there, and this uh, particle physics, superstring, they are controlling the uh, theoretical physics. Now, as I told, if supersymmetry has fallen, supersymmetry in theory has also tacitly fallen. But it does not mean that they are going to, high priests are going to admit it. They will go on working, more PhDs will be there, most postdocs will be there, they are controlling the theoretical physics. 
and we will be compelled to say that emperor has all the clothes on. Thank you. <laughs>